Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode, Module 1.4, Acquiring and Using Cycles, we're going to discover how we can acquire cycles and then how to use them to deploy a canister onto the ICP mainnet network. For today's written tutorial, you can find it by going to the developer documentation, going to developer journey, then going to level one, and then going to 1.4, acquiring and using cycles. So if you recall, we've briefly mentioned cycles several times in the pre-flight operations when talking about the different terms and concepts that you need to be familiar with for developing on ICP. We mentioned that cycles are used to measure resources such as memory, storage, and compute power that are used by a canister when it's deployed on the mainnet. When a canister is deployed on the mainnet, cycles are used to pay for these resources that the canister uses. To obtain cycles, the most common workflow is to convert ICP tokens into cycles, then transfer those cycles into a canister to pay for that canister's consumed resources. Remember that ICP is the native token of the internet computer. Cycles have a fixed price in XDR, which is a pegged stable coin that makes the cost of canister resources predictable and independent of the price of the ICP token. The conversion rate of cycles to XDR is 1 trillion cycles will always correspond to 1 XDR. There will be a link for more information about XDR in the video description below. Since cycles aren't a currency and they're only used to pay for a canister's consumed resources, developers manage the distribution of cycles through a special canister called a cycles wallet. When a canister needs to use cycles that are stored in the cycles wallet, a canister's operations are executed using the canister principle of the cycles wallet rather than your user principle. And if you recall, a principle is an entity that can be authenticated by the internet computer protocol. In this tutorial, we're mentioning Cycles wallets. It is important to note that in the near future, Cycles wallets will have an alternative method known as the Cycles ledger, and we will have corresponding documentation and video footage for that once that is released. But for now, we'll still be using the Cycles wallet. Cycles wallets are necessary since a user's principal can't hold cycles directly since only canisters can have a cycles balance. So since a canister has a cycles balance and can't use the cycles that are stored in your cycles wallet, you need to deposit cycles from your cycles wallet into the canister. This is known as topping up a canister, or when you go to deploy a canister on the main net originally, there is a cycles fee for creating that canister. We haven't dove into cycles and using a cycles wallet just yet thus far in our developer journey since for local execution, the SDK automatically creates a default cycles wallet in every project, and the operations performed that use cycles are done in the background. So up until now, we have only done local development, and so that's why we haven't used a cycles wallet yet. But now in our previous tutorial, 1.3, developing our first dApp, we want to deploy that onto the main net. But in order to deploy that on the main net, we need some cycles and we need a cycles wallet. So that's what we'll be covering in this tutorial is how to obtain those cycles and how to set up that cycles wallet. The prerequisites for setting up a cycles wallet are to make sure that you have set up your developer environment according to the instructions in module 0.3 developer environment setup. If you've been following along with the developer journey thus far, you have already set this up and you should be good to go. If you're just joining our developer journey now, make sure that you follow all the instructions in that module. So to get started, first we need a developer identity. So we're going to open a command line interface. And just for cohesity, we are going to navigate into our developer journey subdirectory. And so if you recall, this is a working directory that we've been using to store all of our projects thus far in our developer journey that I have stored in my user's home directory in the subdirectory developer journey. Now that we're in the command line and we're in our developer journey working directory, we're going to use DFX to create a new developer identity. When you initially use DFX, a default developer identity is used, and that's most likely the identity that you've been using thus far if you've been following along. 
This identity is a principal data type, which is often referred to as your principal identifier. And this can be thought of as a Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet address that is used to interact with those ecosystems. It is important to note that your developer identity principle is not the same as your account identifier, which is used to interact with the ledger. And we'll dive deeper into the differences between these in a later tutorial when we go to use the ledger. But it is important to note that your identity principle and your account identifier are related, but they use different formats. And we'll go into these deeper in a future tutorial when we interact with the ICP ledgers. So in this tutorial, we're going to create a new identity principle using DFX, and then we'll use that principle to obtain cycles and then deploy a cycles wallet. So to get started, we first need to make sure that DFX is currently running. So we can use the command DFX start, and then we're going to use the flag background to assure that the terminal output of the DFX command is logged to the background and that we don't need to open another terminal window. And you can see that I already have DFX running currently, so I get this error message, but that's okay since we want it to be running. Then we're going to use the command DFX identity. Then we're going to use the word new to indicate that we're creating a new identity. And then I'm going to call it developer journey with this capitalization for the letter D and capitalization for the letter J in journey. You can call this new identity whatever you want, but this is what I will be calling it for this tutorial. So then we'll press enter. You'll notice that a seed phrase is returned for this identity. So this is important if you ever need to retrieve this developer identity, if you ever lose it for whatever reason. Note that if you do lose this identity, you will lose any cycles that are stored using this developer identity. So it's important to have this seed for you save just in case. So now that we have a new identity created, we want to tell DFX that this is the identity that we want to be using. By default, DFX is probably using the default developer identity that it created for you when DFX was installed, but we can check that by using DFX identity, and then who am I? And that will return the name of the current developer identity that we're using, which it right now is default. So then to tell DFX that instead we want to use our new developer journey identity, we can do DFX identity use, and then the name of that new identity. And it will return that it's now using that developer journey identity. And then we can run that who am I command again to now see that DFX is using that developer journey identity. Then we want to get the principal ID of this identity since we're going to need this in order to acquire some cycles. So we'll use that DFX identity get principal command and it will return a string of characters that looks like this. And this is your identity's principal ID value. So this is an important value to save and we will need it later in this tutorial. So next, we're going to acquire some cycles. So, like I mentioned previously, cycles can be obtained by converting ICP tokens into cycles. There are a few different ways to obtain ICP tokens, such as purchasing them directly through a crypto exchange, receiving them as a reward for participating in the ICP's governance through the NNS, receiving a grant of tokens through the Definity Foundation, or receiving tokens in return for providing resources as a node provider. For new developers, however, you can request and redeem a free cycles coupon that will give you 10 trillion free cycles that can be used to deploy your dApp on the mainnet. This is a great option for new developers since it doesn't require that you purchase or obtain ICP tokens and then transfer them into cycles. It provides you with cycles to get started with without any other prerequisite steps. So that's what we'll be using today in our developer journey. We'll go through how to request that coupon and then how to redeem that coupon. So first, you're going to want to navigate to the website faucet.definity.org. And so we'll open that in a new tab here. And you can see that there are a couple steps to requesting and redeeming that coupon. So first you're going to hit request cycles, and this is going to launch an invite to our ICP developer community discord server. So this will require that you have a discord account and that you join the server and accept this invite. So upon 
getting this screen, you'll want to select accept invite, and then you'll be prompted to log into your Discord account or create one if you don't have one already. Or if you are already logged in like I am, it will automatically route you to the Discord server. Then you're going to want to scroll down to this channel Cycles Faucet, and I'm going to hide the member list of the server here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, in the message box, you're going to want to type forward slash and then the word request. And you'll see that it pops up this window saying commands matching and you'll want to click on that. And then you'll want to press enter. And so then you'll see that there is a prompt for you to fill out here. And so the first question is what programming language do you use for cancer development? And you can choose as many as you'd like. I'm just going to select Matoko. Then it'll ask you in which area are you planning to build? You can choose what area of development you are interested in. If there is a certain genre that you'd like to focus on, such as gaming, social, finance, productivity. Um, for me, I'm going to click on productivity and infrastructure and tooling. Then it'll ask what capabilities slash features are most interesting to you. You can select as many of these as you'd like. Um, I'm just going to select uh, cancers can sign transactions to other blockchains. Um, and you do need to select at least three for this. So I will also select directly interacting with canisters and hosting full stack dApps. It's going to ask you how long you've been programming. I'm going to select one to three years. It's going to ask, how did you learn about the internet computer? I'm going to just select Twitter. It's going to ask, what is your current goal? Um, I'm going to put down learning slash evaluation as part of a project or job. It's going to ask what programming languages you use. I'm going to put down Python since Matoko is not an option. It's going to ask your current occupation. I'm going to put employed. It's going to ask your previous experience with other blockchains. I'm going to put down Ethereum, Polkadot, and Solana. It's going to ask what programming language you'd like to use for building. I'm going to put down Matoko. And then it's going to ask you to rate your experience with the IC, and I'm of course going to give it five stars. So then it's going to pop up the survey, and this is going to be submitted for review by the team. And I'm going to just fill this out with my information. Of course, you'll want to fill it out with your information. And I'm just, for this, I'm just going to put sample faucet coupon for developer journey tutorial series. And so then it'll confirm thank you for your submission and it's going to give you some links to um, join the discussion and suggest new tutorials or rank other or rank other prior suggestions. And then you will see that you have a ping over here in ticket reviews. And so um, you can check the status of your review here. And you can see that the faucet bot has tagged one of the team members to review this. And it just gives a summary of um, your request and provides with some information to the team so they can review and decide whether to accept or decline your request for the cycles coupon. So once your request for a cycles coupon has been reviewed and approved, you will receive a discord direct message from the cycles faucet bot. And in Discord, you can see that it's going to pop up on the upper left-hand corner here. It's going to say faucet bot, all lowercase letters. And when you click on it, you will see a direct message that indicates what your cycles coupon code is. And so it's going to be this value here. And so we're going to copy that text 
and we're going to go back to our cycles faucet and we are going to insert that coupon code. And we are going to insert that coupon code and select next. Then it's going to give us some instructions for downloading and installing the ICSDK and DFX, which if you've been follow, following along with this developer journey series, you should already have this installed. So we can just go ahead and click next step. And so then the cycles faucet is going to give us this DFX command for redeeming our cycles coupon. Now we're going to need to run this via the command line and we're going to make sure that we run it using the developer identity that we want to use when managing our cycles and our cycles wallet. So we're going to make sure that we're using the developer identity that we just created. So we're going to make sure DFX use or DFX identity use developer journey and then we can make sure that we are using that identity then we can go ahead and copy this command and paste it into our command line window and it will redeem some output saying redeeming coupon this may take up to 30 seconds and now we can see that we have redeemed the coupon in a new wallet. And so this is going to be the ID of our Cycles wallet. And then we can see new wallet set. So it has created this new Cycles wallet and set it for our identity, which in my example is the identity developer journey. And so then on the faucet, we can click next step and we can see that this is a command that we can use to check the balance. So we'll run that DFX wallet network i equal ic and then the word balance and we can see that we have 10 trillion cycles which is the amount that the coupon was good for now going back to the written tutorial for this module there the next section in this tutorial is how to convert ICP tokens into cycles. Now in this developer journey, we aren't using tokens just yet. We are just using the cycles provided from the cycles coupon. But if you are a returning developer on the IC and you have already used your coupon in the past, these are instructions for you once you have obtained ICP tokens through an exchange or through a grant or through an, another method of obtaining ICP tokens. And so you can go ahead and follow these instructions to learn how to convert those tokens into cycles. And then by the end of it, you want to make sure that you have a balance of a few trillion cycles in order to deploy your decentralized application onto ICP in the next tutorial. So that'll wrap things up for today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to be notified when the next episode of the Developer Journey series is released. And give this video a like and a comment to show some feedback and let us know how we can improve the series in the future. There will be links in the video description to the written tutorial corresponding to this video and to other developer resources such as our community discord and our developer documentation. In the next episode, we'll be putting together the creation of our poll dApp and the cycles that we've just acquired and deploying our dApp on the mainnet network. So be sure to tune in. That'll wrap things up for today. Take care.